I think it's a, a given that in the future that, that running Oracle on vSphere is going to happen. It's just a matter of time and the, the uplift, very similar to the, the cloud in general. You know, you got a lot of verbiage around the cloud today, and most of the surveys will tell you that it's happening. It's not 100% today, but it'll be 100% tomorrow. Uh, Titans are, are big dogs. So uh, this morning you saw Dave from House Brick, who's the world's foremost expert on uh, Oracle licensing. Uh, we're going to go see tonight uh, Zach Greinke versus Madison Bumgarner, two of the best pitchers in the uh, Major League Baseball. And we thought we'd add one more uh, Titan. We're deeply appreciative of you all spending the time with us like this. You know, we want it to be very much a two-way relationship, uh, you know, where you're giving us feedback and, you know, we're telling you how you can help. And the technology industry has lived and thrived on, to me, two principles, right? One is never impede the progress of technology, right? And two is do the right thing for the consumer. You know, that's why Silicon Valley is Silicon Valley over the last, you know, four or five decades, right? You know, to me, those two principles, all, you know, I mean, always bet on the new technology, the opportunity, always do the right thing for the consumer. So that's the right thing for the technology industry. You know, I'll say now our attention has shifted a bit more to the software-driven storage uh, platforms, one of which, of course, is ours, right, with vSAN. And because if we're sitting under a mission-critical database, you know, they're not sucking us out of there for, like, decades. Running Oracle and uh, Oracle applications on vSphere is, is exciting because it gives us a way to leverage all of our infrastructure and keep the infrastructure uh, at a higher utilization to, uh, to, to maintain uh, availability. It's, it's really the wave of the future. Uh, like John said, it gives you a chance to really look at consolidation and optimize your Oracle licensing, uh, especially when you're processor based. I think it really just makes sense that vSphere can really get the potential for not only your database workload, but for other things and really make use of all that storage and clusterware. It's just a no-brainer to not run Oracle. You really should be running Oracle on VMware. I think that's a great answer. I think putting your, your infrastructure on a virtualized uh, platform just makes sense for all the inherent redundancy that's naturally built into the uh, platform and the recoverability uh, and the concept of never going down. It just makes a product even better. So with virtualization, you can mix and match. You have a lot of freedom that you normally just don't have with bare metal. One of the things that I, I listened to this week and saw was how Oracle on vSphere could provide me an additional layer of security, how it could give me the ability for testing, my, my patching, my high availability, that vMotion was absolutely incredible. And I am, from an end user position, I didn't have a whole lot of understanding. And now I can see the integration from top to bottom. So I am ecstatic to go home and see what I can do with some of my uh, resources. Running Oracle on, on vSphere is, is a, is a no-brainer. It's, it's kind of like, why would you not? It's the, you're not taking anything away from Oracle. Uh, what you're doing is you're enhancing its uh, high availability, its ability to uh, uh, utilize uh, different resources that may not have been available to them uh, in a, in a uh, hard box environment. Um, you know, I was just with one of the largest banks in the United States, and they have made a huge commitment to the VMware stack, right? You know, the full meal deal, right? Our management, you know, NSX, uh, uh, you know, big vSphere customers plan to use more of our storage stack as well. You know, and they're essentially looking at us to be the software layer to run their data center. The feature that really impressed me the most about VMware was that vMotion. VMotion, the technology, when someone said it's just like magic, it seemed truly too good to be true. But when we got to see demo and hands-on, it really was that great a technology. So that was probably my highlight technology-wise. I think, wow, that's a pretty powerful platform. Most storage systems uh, were optimized for hard drives, and this includes like the famous B tree structure is very, very optimized for a hard drive. And that means that you aim to optimize for future read IOs. Present writes don't matter that much. Those get absorbed. Uh, you know, the storage is inexpensive. You're better off using space rather than not using space. Uh, Flash actually reverses all of these characteristics. 
everything we write is large. And so this comes back to treating the flash, uh, treating the SSDs like the underlying media. It's actually like in tuples that would be on the order of uh, trillions of tuples. Usable space, there's no limit because there, there are multiple representations for what you call space. What the database of the future looks like, it's not a B tree, it's, it's a pretty different structure because the media is that different. Oh, there's a big value in the, the Unix to virtual Linux across a wide array of customers and former, former organizations I've either worked with or worked for. The um, customers that I see that could benefit from going to vSphere are it's just a tremendous number. Customers have a desire to uh, be as efficient as possible, to be able to utilize resources as efficiently as possible. And I think they obviously recognize how VMware actually uh, promotes that, that opportunity for them. Our Unix to Linux virtualization, I think, is, is a really good way to get off the old iron and get onto a newer, better platform. In fact, after we get done with our sessions today, I'm flying to LA for a customer of mine, and that's on the, the table tomorrow to discuss. We have quite a few customers who are in Spark, and they're, they're looking to get off these old Spark boxes. And by having vSphere and VMware, it's gonna provide uh, a very seamless um, implementation for them. So I've been very impressed with how VMware is looking at not just Oracle, but SQL Server and Hadoop. To come up with a reason not to virtualize, it better be really, really good. You know, one of the side effects, for instance, of the Photon program is I'm consolidating all of my releases that are Linux, right? The Photon runtime becomes the, sing the singular Linux of all of the VMware products going forward. In all honesty, I see no roadblocks to running uh, Oracle on vSphere. I drank the Kool-Aid five years ago. I have over 350 customers, of which the majority are virtualized today. Uh, it, it's just an absolute no-brainer. Yes, I see incredible numbers of road, not, road, roadblocks, but those roadblocks are not technical. What they are is fear, uncertainty, and doubt. There's really no technical roadblocks to running Oracle on there. In fact, there are some really significant advantages. If you look at the layers of legacy code, lines of code that don't have to be executed if you're running para-virtualized drivers and so forth that really don't have a need for making allowances for cantankerous hardware of yesteryear, um, and, you know, there's some great technical advantages to it. When you look at the newer chips that Intel's making and AMD, they're so much faster than they were even three years ago that they're shocked to find out I only need eight vCPUs instead of the 32 I'm coming from on the physical hardware. The only thing I think that we need to do and I'm going to do when I uh, leave here is educate my customers because I think they're not aware of all of the possibilities that could be, could be done with, with VMware. I have no customers that I can think of that would not be able to run it tomorrow. We find ourselves in the midst of a pretty large transition happening. Um, the first question for us and the thing we're grappling with is how do we get more people kind of up the stack if you look at you know, app owners, line of business owners, to really understand the value of the infrastructure. You know, we're storage guys mostly, we sell to storage admins, and if you look at our business, Oracle's actually our number one app. As people look at building on-prem infrastructure, I think they're realizing that, that the cloud is more than just kind of rent a server, um, it's very much rent a platform. Um, we've partnered a lot with VMware, we can go in, we have very large private cloud customers who use vRealize to automate the basics of that. How can we be disruptive, not just to the technology, but the way storage is purchased and consumed and supported, and et cetera. And so we built a product that can be more piecemeal upgraded, and we literally want it to add value in a customer's environment for over 10 years. Um, at the end of those 10 years, it might not have any of the same pieces that it started with, but all those evolutions should be without disruptive uh, uh, you know, downtime, without migration of data, any of that kind of stuff. Today, if you buy um, a larger scaled array in the, in the hundreds of terabyte deployment range, um, you're easily in the one to two dollar per gigabyte range. Um, this year, as the market evolves, I think we'll see under a dollar a gig. And so our belief is it'll last for 10 plus years when we write the way we do, even with full write environment. And our vision here is essentially you should never have to buy the same thing twice. What I liked about Pure Storage was the, the cleanness of the interface and how 
well consistently perform. VMware clearly gets that the world is moving towards converged storage and so I expect my hypervisors, my hypervisor and the VMs on it to run faster, quicker, better, simpler uh, and in fact you proved that to me here today. It was quick, I, I actually was amazed at how quick a terabyte was made a snapshot. It wasn't even a second and there was that one demo that was done in I think it was six seconds from snapshot to recovery and then back again, it kind of blew me away. Well, you have to move to Flash because of its superior performance. We put certain types of files on certain locations to, to remove I.O. contention. That's simply not necessary to do. It just makes perfect sense for my business. Our vision would be that you don't really care if it's an Amazon, Azure, private cloud, managed cloud, et cetera, you know, our software layer allows you to take advantage of those for your workload. You know, so I'd say, you know, at the highest level, we say we want to be the control plane for IT to run, manage, secure, and connect, you know, workloads and devices in a multi-cloud, multi-device world. We want you to be, you know, a rabid, fanatical lunatics for our technology, and we want to help you do your job better. You know, so thank you for the time.